good afternoon uh, uh, from me. Uh, thank you for attending uh, the webinar. I am uh, the Think Nature uh, uh, Project uh, Coordinator, and uh, what I would like uh, to do is uh, to just present to you uh, some of the work and especially the platform that we have uh, developed uh, that uh, you are welcome all to join and uh, hopefully it will be one of uh, the places uh, uh, where you will be able to uh, find information and be able to collaborate with uh, a lot of other people that they are dealing with uh, nature-based solutions. Uh, basically, our uh, society is facing with uh, major grand challenges that uh, we really need uh, to try to uh, attend to and uh, solve. We are talking about uh, food security, we are talking about water security, disaster risk. All of these things are uh, under the, during the same time that we need uh, to try to adapt and mitigate climate change. Uh, we need uh, to try to improve uh, human health and at the same time uh, the economic and social development uh, and uh, uh, solve uh, issues of uh, uh, inequality. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this is uh, in the next uh, 20 to 30 years, uh, this is going to be extremely uh, urgent to try to find solutions. Uh, by 2050, we are expecting the world population to increase to more than 9 billion. In the next uh, couple of decades, uh, we expect uh, to have a significant increases in energy demand, in food uh, demand, and uh, water demand. Uh, trying to account for these increases while we are adapting and mitigating uh, climate change uh, it's going to be a significant challenge. So this is the food, water, energy nexus that we are talking about. And as you see in uh, the right hand side uh, uh, graph, the population and where the population is residing has changed. In the 1950s, 30% of the population was in the urban area, while 70% in the rural. And by 2030, this is going to be reversed. Uh, so urbanization and dealing with sustainable urbanization is going to be a major challenge. And of course, we think that uh, these uh, solutions, uh, we need to learn from the best. And we think that uh, nature is the grand uh, engineer. And uh, trying to adapt uh, to solutions that uh, nature is using is going to be, we will be able to get uh, the most of it. So the European Union has defined nature-based solutions which is very similar to IUCN, is uh, solutions, living solutions, inspired and supported by nature, that simultaneously provide environmental, social, economic benefits, and help to build resilience. Uh, these are solutions that they bring more nature and nature features and processes into cities, landscapes, seascapes, through locally adapted, resource efficient, and uh, systemic interventions. These are solutions that they provide many benefits, multiple benefits. And uh, uh, the issue here is how can we use these solutions uh, in such a way that uh, we will be able to uh, take, uh, um, uh, to be able to uh, gain from those multi benefits. Uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we wanted to do as part of uh, uh, the Think Nature uh, project is uh, to try to come up uh, with, or to uh, synthesize the work that has already been done uh, of, uh, in terms of the classification, in terms of nature-based solution typology. And uh, basically there were two different uh, aspects that they were very similar as the first uh, level of uh, typology. And uh, this was uh, based on the degree of intervention or the level or type of engineering. And uh, basically we have uh, the work that it is being published in uh, Gerb uh, Egermont, uh, which defines into three different types of uh, NBS. Uh, and uh, one that it is very minimal uh, um, engineering, uh, the other uh, that it is uh, more into management, and the third that it is uh, physical uh, projects. And uh, this is uh, basically coincides uh, with uh, the three uh, type of classification that the Urban Green Up project has given, which is uh, uh, strategies, this is type one, actions, which is type two, and the physical projects that it is in uh, type three. So uh, basically, 
uh, utilizing these uh, three uh, um, at the first level uh, uh, typology, uh, one that it is uh, no or uh, minimal intervention in ecosystem, better use of natural protective ecosystem. This is the strategies. We are talking about uh, protection and conservation strategies. We are talking about urban planning strategies, uh, monitoring and coastal area uh, strategies. Uh, the type two uh, level, the type two typology is the NBS for sustainability and multifunctionality of managed uh, ecosystem. These are the actions. Here we are talking about urban green space management and waste management. And then the type three, which is the design and management of new ecosystems. These are the physical projects. And here we are talking about uh, um, NDS that can be applied to ground, water, and uh, building and structures. Now, the last uh, type has uh, uh, a third level of classification. And uh, here you can see, uh, uh, for instance, for water, we are talking about uh, natural and semi-natural water bodies uh, or constructed well plants uh, or built structures for water uh, management, urban uh, blue infrastructure and uh, coastal area actions. For ground, we are talking about uh, parks and gardens, uh, structures for food production, ecological restoration, uh, systems for erosion control, and so forth. And then for buildings, we are talking about green roofs, green walls, uh, materials, and so forth. So below that, we have identified at least uh, 100 different uh, NBS uh, uh, type uh, um, solutions. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, uh, so basically, we think that uh, uh, utilizing this type of uh, typology and in the appendix of this uh, presentation, uh, we have all these 100 uh, different types of MBS, and uh, this is also going to be uploaded on the Think Nature platform. Now, uh, going back uh, uh, in terms of uh, what the European Union uh, wants uh, to do, the vision that they have is that uh, they want to develop an EU-wide evidence base regarding the benefits, the cost effectiveness, and the economic viability of NBS. So here, we are developing a common knowledge repository and data management. This is going to be part of the OPLA platform, and it will be accessible, and you will be able to search, like in the uh, uh, figure that I have of uh, the print screen that I have of uh, the Think Nature platform. You will be able <coughs> excuse me, you will be able to see uh, all of the different case studies and within uh, the next month you will be able to search the case studies and you will be able to try to, to see how good uh, the uh, information that it is being uh, compiled in these uh, uh, case studies are. The second thing is that uh, to establish a European reference framework and uh, uh, so uh, there is a task force on a common evaluation framework. So KPIs are being developed and these KPIs will be used uh, in the repository to develop a meta database of uh, KPIs. So uh, you, one would be able to assess the effectiveness of uh, the case studies and of the uh, implemented NBS. Uh, the third is uh, to build an, uh, an innovative community of practice and uh, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the objective of the Think Nature platform is uh, to try to get all of the different stakeholders uh, provide information and at the same time uh, uh, engage them in dialogue. So I urge you that you uh, uh, join the, the platform, enter the platform, and uh, uh, there, there is uh, going to be dialogue that you will be able to gain information, ask uh, questions, uh, uh, see who else is working in a similar area and so forth. And at the same time, uh, the, we are hoping that uh, uh, the Think Nature platform is a knowledge hub. So basically, you will be able to find a lot of the literature there, videos, the webinar, uh, all of this information is uh, being stored in the platform and it will be in one place where you will be able to find uh, NBS information. And finally, is to create a global market and establish a new business and governance model. And uh, basically, 
showcase the business case of uh, NBS. When we are talking about uh, designing NBS, there are two things that I wanted to tell you and one example that I want to give you. The first thing is that uh, when you do NBS design, be bold, think a little bit out of the box. And uh, here is an example of uh, the Gangwei Chu Park in uh, Tsinghua City, where basically they have developed uh, a wonderful park that uh, this park is flooded uh, a certain period of the year and it alleviates from flooding the city itself. The second point that I want to uh, point out uh, with respect uh, to uh, uh, NBS, uh, designing and applying NBS, is uh, that it requires knowledge synthesis. For some of you that you remember the Star Trek, is uh, NBS and the design is not the Borg. So it doesn't want to take all of your ideas and kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we want the stakeholders distinctiveness. We want to hear all of the voices and basically the NBS needs to be co-designed. And uh, to illustrate that, I'm giving you an example of something that is happening in an NBS that, or a, a case study that uh, we are working on right now. Uh, this is in Crete, uh, in the Kilaris River Basin, where we are facing with a significant uh, bank erosion of the river. And at the same time, uh, we are having a, a decline of the forest. It's a, it used to have a wonderful uh, riparian forest. Uh, that uh, right now, what uh, uh, it is, it's only one line of uh, trees. And uh, as you can see in the picture, and uh, uh, along the river bank, and uh, these uh, trees, because of the erosion, they are failing. So basically here is that uh, uh, what we really need to do if we want to reestablish the riparian forest is uh, to try to build, uh, because we have seen uh, uh, at least 20 to 30 meters to rebuild the riparian forest 20 to 30 meters on each side of uh, the river bank. Uh, what that means is that uh, we need to try to involve uh, the farmers to understand the benefits and the co-benefits of having a riparian forest and uh, because the farmers need to be involved because they are farming and their land they own the land all the way as you can see to the edge of the river so basically, this uh, part of this land has to be reclaimed. They have to agree to that and rebuild the riparian forest. And uh, uh, the uh, benefits that uh, the region is going to get because of this riparian forest are going to be enormous. So basically, we have to be bold on how we are thinking and not to say, well, who's going to sell the land? And this is impossible and uh, try to uh, think really big and uh, because that's the only way that we can uh, solve uh, uh, problems. Uh, so with this, I want to thank you and I want to uh, ask you to join the Think Nature uh, platform. Uh, and uh, as I said, you will be able to get a lot of information of what's happening on NBS and you will be able to uh, see uh, the dialogue of uh, uh, ask questions and uh, different people, different stakeholders will be able to answer uh, these questions for you. Thank you very much.